What's up guys, we're back with another video and like I said yet the um last video that I made we are going to be reacting to part two. I've been in a coma for years uh, but I could hear everything part two. So let's go ahead and like the video. And let's try to hit five likes on this video again because like I'm trying to like think. And yeah, let's jump right into it. History. It was pitch black, so I missed a step on the ladder, and then my leg slipped. The damage she suffered to her head due to the fall has resulted in severe internal bleeding in her brain, resulting in a coma. But I wasn't in a coma! That meant that I could hear everything. A year quickly turned into two, and I felt the person I used to be disappearing. I had to find a way to stay here, in this world. I remember loving science, but I no longer remembered any of the stuff that we'd learned at school. At the same time, my mind clung onto those memories, and at the same time, it started creating new ones that hadn't existed before. I had to find a way to stay here, in this world. Even if I had to create my own world inside my head, Maisie became my best friend. She always visited on Sundays. Every time she came, she talked about her classmates, how Sophie had fallen in love with Joe, and how Kit had failed the math test so the teacher had punished him by making him solve 10 equations in front of the whole class. Maisie's visits, though they were only in my head, were the best parts of my day. I didn't know that what I was doing in order to entertain myself was actually a kind of exercise for my damaged mind. I didn't realize that I was helping myself get better. If I'd known, I wouldn't have waited three years to start doing it. My consciousness was slowly returning. You might wonder, how did I realize that? Well, simply, I felt my eyelids flutter whenever Maisie visited me. Believe it or not, our thoughts have incredible power. But even so, no one knew that I was coming out of a coma. Ever since I'd first been diagnosed as being in a coma, I was totally aware of everything happening around me, exactly like a normal person. But I was stuck inside a silent body, it seemed, a mind full of life that no one noticed. I started accepting this cruel fate and got lost in my made-up thoughts. Suddenly, I could no longer tell the difference between what was real and what wasn't. There's a fine line that separates memory from imagination, and I clearly overstepped it. But the one thing I was absolutely certain of was that the fights my parents had and my mom's betrayal were 100% real. After four years, my mom had had enough of me. How long must I endure moving this body left and right without any response? She would yell in my dad's face, and he would answer, Until she dies. Imagine being in my position, not being able to speak to a friend, not feeling loved anymore, not having any ambitions or dreams, no hope of being able to look forward to anything. All my thoughts were miserable ones. I lived in fear, and if I was being honest, I was waiting for death so I could escape from all of this. I pictured myself dying in some nursing home, cold and alone. And so that's how I spent those four long years. Snowball's existence was my only comfort. My eyelids started fluttering a lot. You might think that's not really a big deal. Anyone can do that without trying, but that wasn't the case with me. Snowball noticed what was going on and started to bark for hours and hours without stopping. My mom couldn't tolerate it. My dad came home and Snowball continued to bark. Everyone went to bed and Snowball was still barking. He was just like me, wishing for someone to realize that I was still with them. But what happened was the opposite of what we hoped for. The next day, his barking stopped completely. I didn't know what uh, happened to him. Mom must have gotten rid of him. I was really worried yeah, about him. Yeah, I was thinking Snowball that. was my only friend, the only one that made me feel that I wasn't actually dead. He disappeared. That day, I heard some heated discussion between my parents. You might say that nothing was new, but this time, it was different. My mom decided to leave my dad. She accused him of having never been the perfect husband. She was crazy. He was the coolest what? dad a girl could ever wish for. He oh, tried no, to persuade what? her to stay, but it was pointless. She screamed at the top of her voice. It would have been better if she died that day. It's like a curse that won't go away unless I leave. The sound of the door slamming was the last thing I heard that day. What type of mother is this for real, dog? What the hell? I was incapable of changing any of the things around me, or even the way my mom and dad looked at me. I was an invisible silent watcher to how people acted when they thought no one was looking. Unfortunately, I wasn't just a watcher. Because of my inability to communicate with people, I became the perfect victim. A creature that looked like it was devoid of emotions. 
For four years, my mom used to abuse me mentally and physically. What did I ever do to her to deserve that? A part of I me know, wanted right? to cry, and the other part wanted to fight. I was so full of pain and sadness. It was torture. The following day, it But if I woke up that moment, I would have just started brushing her up. I swear. She, she is not a mom. It was like oh I no God. longer existed inside the house. My dad was really depressed. He moved me to a nursing home, exactly like I'd expected would happen. I felt worthless now without Snowball, and without people around me. I became even more of a shell of my former self. Another year went by and everyone still thought I was in a deep coma. In the nursing house, everything was so quiet. No voices, no movements, and no talking. Just a stranger who moved me left and right every day and who made sure that my machines were working normally. The six year mark came and went, and then the seventh, six, and everything was seven the same. Years. I used to figure out She's that the time from the nurses old. changing shifts every six hours. Oh that meant God. that on the fourth time I was moved, oh a my day God, would have Need a professional logo serious? for your brand? I've used the new Wix logo maker to create one for my startup. I'll show you how. That's well, hey, Edge. No one visited me during the three years that I spent there, except my friend Maisie. No one cared about me but her. I lived in terror. I knew every day would be exactly the same as the last mm -hmm. one, over and over again. I totally lost any hope I had of I hearing another person's person. voice. But then one night, my dad decided to visit me. I had no idea what date it was because I'd lost all sense of time. But it happened to be my 20th birthday. He held my oh hand my and God. I couldn't believe it when I heard his voice. It felt like a dream. He told me, you won't be alone anymore. I'll be with you forever from now on. I can't believe you just turned 20. Emotions welled up in me and suddenly I could old. feel the familiar fluttering of my eyelids. I had to open my eyes. I couldn't stay like this anymore. Oh, my dad had his face Let's buried go. in my shoulder and he was crying. He couldn't see my face or my up. eyes, Let's but when go. he turned his head, he jumped and ran outside screaming at the top of his voice. Doctor, I need a doctor. Perhaps emotions have more power than we realize. My dad's love for me made me open my oh eyes my once God. again. The doctors ran some tests on me and none of them could explain what had happened. They only said the damage that her head suffered was apparently able to heal with time. Your daughter is out of her coma. To make sure I was able to Let's hear go. them, the doctor asked me to blink twice. And I did it! Being able to communicate again, even in a simple way, felt like the best thing in the world. But even more than that was the fact that I was no longer a nobody. Dad was so excited. He didn't even know where to begin. But my movement and reactions were still limited. It would take time. There were seriously times where I almost gave up. But I had to hold on to this. My dad promised never to leave me alone, and he kept his word. At night, my dad moved my bed towards the window. It was the first time I'd seen the sky for the last seven years. At that Mom. moment, a star fell from the sky. I closed my eyes and wished to be able to speak again. I mean, there must have been a reason for the star to fall at that moment, right? Sure. It couldn't have been a coincidence. That night, my dad told me about that dark day. He told me how Snowball ran home barking nonstop. My mom tried to shut him up and to kick him out, but he refused. He bit my dad's Aww. pants and kept pushing until my dad came with him outside. From afar, he saw me motionless on the ground. He panicked and drove me to the hospital in a hurry. There, they told him that there was no hope, but my dad wouldn't give up. He knew there would come a day where I'd be okay again. He must have gotten sick of waiting for that day. It's true that I was happy for recovering gradually, but even then, I didn't feel yep. completely free. People mm -hmm. around me were still controlling everything. When and what I ate, if I could stay in bed, or if I should be sitting on a chair. It didn't matter how many times I blinked, I couldn't say anything except for yes and no. One day, my dad came in all happy. He told me that the doctors had finally agreed to let him take me on a wheelchair around the city. It was the first time in so long that I get to move and finally leave my bed. I was scared. The outside world must have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I should go. But I needed this. It was time to get back out there. I remember one sure. moment from that day very vividly. She's a strong girl. Now that's how you know that's a, that's a lady right there. My dad left me alone in the car on her way back in order to buy something quickly from the store. A woman passed by, looked at me, and smiled. I didn't know the reason behind her smile back then, and I'll never know. But that small smile, a small human interaction, made me feel better again. That woman's smile is what pushed me to continue. Seeing my dad come into my room was always the best moment of my day. 
However, I wasn't pleased when my dad entered my room with the press who came to listen to my story. Apparently, they no. decided that my story was worth being told and shared. Another A. Take one A, take one. What's your favorite browser extension? Uh, online shopping is. The press mm -hmm. ruined my We're peace and quiet. That. My mom even returned just so she could be in the spotlight. She returned after disappearing for so long, just for fame. Bro. The. But she cares about money, like what I said in the last video. But mother, you need to get out if you want to be with a rich person. Be with them, look, get out, don't worry about them anymore. Press did help a bit though. My dad had them help us look for solutions and treatments that might help me get better. My mom though, well, she didn't exactly show up because she suddenly remembered the importance of family. She was just there for fame, and dad wanted me to decide right. if she could stay or not. Mom's answer was, My dear daughter, do you want your mommy back in your life? I blinked no. non-stop, and this meant I wanted her to go. Because I knew she didn't care if I lived or died. Yep, get my out. dad was a person who'd taken care of me my whole life. Of course he had weak moments where he wasn't by my side, but at least he still loved me enough and thought of me all the time. And for me, that was enough. And guess what? My dad got in contact with one of the big companies that made medical devices. They had created a device that gets implanted inside the brain and is connected to a special computer. The device sends electric waves to the computer that then says the words out loud. That company heard about my condition in the media and were happy to help me. The first time they tried this on me it was pretty funny. Everything I said made everyone laugh, but for me it was sad because I never got an answer to my question. What I asked was, what happened to my dog Snowball? My story might be sad. Some of you might believe it, and others will say that it is just a product of my imagination. But what can't be denied is that there are a lot of people like me in this world who no one knows anything about because they don't have the ability to connect with people. It wouldn't hurt to act nicely towards them and not to ignore them, because yeah. like me, they have feelings too. My suffering lasted for seven years, but I truly believe that the star that fell that night was the reason my wish of being able to talk again came true. Everything happens yep. for a reason. Did you like my story? Don't forget to tell me what you think in the comments below. And to like and subscribe to the channel. Well, that was the end of the video, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. And I'm also going to be reacting to like, some other stuff and like, making like, videos and all that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.